Hey everyone, this is Michael with Quiet Lawn. I wanted to make a video uh, stating three possible reasons you might see your lawn turning brown this time of year. Um, you know, this is the summer, this is the growing season for our grasses, our warm season grasses here in the south. Uh, you should see your grass doing well. Um, the only circumstances that they won't be uh, would, would generally be covered by these three situations. So first situation is very common. Uh, and it happens a lot when we treat lawns is that you have certain areas of your lawn especially wet ones because we had a really wet spring and early summer uh, you have wet areas that are covered with grassy weeds like sedges and different kinds of grassy weeds like that and we go and treat it and uh, a few weeks after we treat those weeds of course die and you know you have those bare spots and people attribute that to the grass dying and they just couldn't tell the difference between those grassy weeds and the, uh, the their grass, their species of grass. Second reason is you have some kind of insect or possibly disease issue. So right now, real common is uh, something called army worms or sod web worms. Uh, we just send out videos of that if you're seeing signs of that and you're coming outside and your lawn is looking different over a period of a couple of days, you're seeing areas that just look like they're eaten to the ground you know that's typically the the early indicator of web worms and you know you just need to contact us and let us know so that we can address that before it becomes a big problem um, but the most common thing we see in the summer and the reason your lawn turns uh, starts to turn brown is due to drought stress and lack of enough water um, water is crucial to all life uh, us you know plants animals all need water to survive and uh you know we had an early uh, a wet spring and early summer and we were getting plenty of water and uh, but that's kind of changed and we've gotten into a dry uh you know dry pattern here the last few weeks um what you're gonna what you're seeing first is you start to see drought stress in your lawn if you're not watering enough so i don't know if you can see it in the videos but you can see these areas that start to turn kind of grayish or bluish you can see this area right here looks different than the surrounding grass that's like vibrant green and what happens right there is it's called needling. It's basically the blades of grass. They start to curl up uh, into a needle. It's kind of protecting itself from the sunlight. Um, and that's why it gives that different appearance. Uh, if that continues and you don't water your lawn or you don't get rain, uh, eventually those spots turn to start to die off. And this is an example. This is my lawn. Uh, my lawn's usually really good shape. Um, but I went out of town to Virginia for a few days last week, just three or four days. And when I came back, this area right here had a lot of dead grass in it. This area was typically gets drought stress first. Uh, it's by the road. You've got this, you know, constant heat from the concrete. Uh, these are the areas that you typically see dry out first and get drought stressed. Uh, these areas and then areas that are wide open out in the sun. Um, but just in the course of three or four days of me being gone, this area went from being drought stressed to losing large parts of the, the grass, you know, large parts of it dying off. You know, we hear all the time people say, you know, oh, but we were, you know, when you say you need to water more, you know, we had a lot of rain and stuff earlier this summer. Well, that doesn't matter. You know, just like you and I could drink a bunch of water a month ago and be very well hydrated. If we stopped drinking water for the last couple of weeks, we'd still be dead. Uh, you know, same with your grass. It has no system to be able to store that water for a long time. So, you know, while, while we get lots of rain earlier in the summer and the grass was loving it and the weeds were loving it, you know, it only takes a, you know, a week or two of really hot weather, dry weather to, you know, undo all that good and kill your grass. So back here's another good example. You know, this area is always pretty dry out here. It doesn't have the shade from the house a large part of the day. It's just directly out in the sun. I don't water this area much because it's the backyard. Um, and you can see this area has started, you know, to have some loss. You can see it started to get drought stressed. That's the different appearance, the bluish grayish appearance of the grass where the grass blades are curling up. And you can see in the areas that are even drier over here, a lot of that drought stress, which is which will recover just fine as long as you get water, you get rain. A lot of that has started to die off in these areas that are drier. So you can get down close and you can see, you know, parts of the grass is actually dying off there due to that. So, um, you know, what you need to do is you need to start watering. 
uh, more frequently and for longer duration. Um, irrigation systems are only meant to supplement rainfall. Uh, it's very hard for an irrigation system to get out the amount of water that you can with rain. So even in even watering pretty heavily with your irrigation system, it's often time it's often hard to keep up. Uh, with the needs of the grass because like i said they're only meant to supplement the rain and if we're getting you know long dry periods like is normal here in our area to you know to have droughts for for weeks or maybe a month or more um you you know you really got to try to give your grass as much of help as you can because you know uh, putting fertilizer on your lawn is not magic you know no amount of food can overcome the need for water uh you know your for your grass to thrive to thicken up, to green up, uh, it needs to have a sufficient amount of water. Uh, you know, your lawn, if it doesn't, it's going to pull back, it's going to reserve its, you know, try to preserve itself. It's not going to put energy into growth and thickening up. It's going to try to survive. It's going to go into drought stress mode and it's going to try to survive and it's going to shed any parts above the ground that it can to try to uh, preserve its root system. And, uh, you know, you just got to understand that and you got to understand that you got to water you know if, if you want to have a nice lawn in times like this uh you just got to water and uh you know it's different for everybody there is no one size fits all uh you know we make some recommendations for watering but you have to adjust for that because your your soil might be different than mine you know a lot of parts of this area they have very thick clay soils that retain moisture and a lot of parts are uh you know very sandy so you have to water more often because that water drains through or you know like i said we have different types of irrigation systems different areas in your lawn that are more or less shaded that need more water so you really just have to look at it um, and it's pretty easy you know if you start seeing signs of drought stress in a certain area water that area more if i came out here and I uh, watered this area, you know, with a water hose for a good 10 minutes. Uh, when I come back out here tomorrow, this area will be greened up and it will be matching the rest of the grass. Um, so, you know, it's really something that you have to adjust throughout the season. Uh, while you didn't have to water much at all a month ago when we were getting rain two or three days a week, now you might have to water two, three, four days a week just to make up for the fact that we're not getting any rain. Um, but if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, you know, I know it's not a, I wish there was a simple across the board answer for this stuff, but it really does require some, you know, attention and, and uh, customization for your specific conditions.